Hey, what's up, guys? I um, wanted to show you a little something I did earlier. I covered a, an event that was called uh, Street Satyrs. Uh, it was uh, brought on by, uh, it was presented by uh, three different organizations, uh, one of which is a uh, Jewish, Jewish organization uh, here in uh, central Ohio. The other two, I think, were, were Christian based. Um, anyway, so the the uh, protest, uh, as you can see the image, imagery here, uh, was in front of Chase Bank, downtown Ohio, um, Columbus, uh, to be specific. Um, and it was my first time actually doing a live coverage of something for Real Progressives. Uh, I'm working, uh, volunteering uh, for uh, Real Progressives. Uh, so, um, anyway, so this is what I did uh, earlier uh, today, uh, 12 noon. Until about one or one something, I think it was. Um, interesting um, weather uh, for Ohio. It was like rain and then we got hail. Um, anyway, so that, that, that's what happened as far as extracurricular activities. And as you can see, basically uh, they put down Jimmy Diamond's number and all that stuff. Um, the one thing that I would probably say, um, they said that... Um, that Jimmy Diamond and uh, Chase Bank had a uh, uh, promise to the best or something to that effect. I'm not can't remember exactly, but that was that's way down the that's way down the bit in the video. Um, well, basically, and it, it did involve Russia. Uh, basically, what happened was, uh, if you don't know, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase pro processed a debt payment for Russia uh, on on their U.S. Uh, bond debt. That's pretty much all that happened as far as that part goes. Otherwise, as far as I know of. Um, Russia is doing stellar as far as the gas and oil sales uh, because the the sanctions against them don't touch the gas and oil sector of their country. It it, it affects everything else. Um, and there was a there was at least a few people in this video that didn't want to be shown. I wasn't trying to show them; just having the the camera angle happened to go on them as I was trying to get the sign. So for that, for those people that I did get that didn't want to be shown, I apologize. I wasn't trying to actually uh, show you as far as I was trying to show the sign, all that stuff. Anyway, uh, let's see one of the things I wanted to get with. Um, let's see, is this it? Uh, sure. Um, <laughs> This is one of those things where I was going to try to read through and try to at least uh, do some notes, but anyway. Uh, and uh, I wanted to go over a plan that Warren Mosler has on, on his website, um, uh, MoslerEconomics.com. As you're saying, this is from Oh wait, uh, and I think this was just, uh, I think just before, I want to say, I could be wrong about that, but just before the the economic crisis, this is what his proposal was. Let me know if, if you were in, uh, affected by the, uh, about the more, uh, mortgage crisis, well, the, just the financial crisis overall. Uh, if you watch this, let me know if any of this would have actually uh, helped you out as far as that part goes. Uh, money fund issue. Remove uh, the 100000 cap on insured bank deposits. This adds no risk to government, and it will eliminate the need for money funds, which the cap created in the first place. So it looks like there was a cap of, uh, on insur insurance in regards to bank deposits. I'm not sure if that is like uh, housing insurance and stuff of that nature, but anyway. Uh, brokers slash dealers let them go if they don't survive at worst the their assets will be distributed by the other by the bankruptcy court if it goes that far uh they do nothing but uh they do nothing that i know of this uh, that serves public purpose and or the real economic or sorry economy that banks can't do and the banks are already regulated and supervised Insurance companies, policyholders should be government should be government issued, and insurance companies' assets and capital regulations should be updated. You will 
No, uh, you will know insurance regulation doesn't go far enough if there are too many government losses to make policy holders whole. AIG got short got short credit, which is sold insurance on securities of low prices, and lost all their capital as risk, and the price of the of insurance went up. Looks to me like a failure of regulations that allowed that much risk. Glass Steagall, I think it was, uh, that was regul- regulating that stuff. Anyway, home ownership. Continue to fund the agencies via the Treasury to keep cost of funds at a minimum. Have the agency buy and hold new originations and thereby eliminate that portion of the secondary market. The secondary markets serve no public purpose beyond working past flaws. Uh, wait, working yeah, uh, beyond working past flaws in the institutional structure that should instead be addressed. Increase and enforce criminal penalties for mortgage application fraud is functionally the same as ro- robbing a bank. Banks, in fact, lower the discount rate to the Fed's uh, Fed funds target rate and eliminate the need for collateral. This is how it should have been anyway. So, in other words, I, I guess you're saying that a lot of people put their housing up uh, for you know second mortgages and stuff of that nature, and that's what the, uh, helped facilitate the crisis. Uh, bank assets and solvency are already highly regulated, and how they are funded doesn't uh, doesn't alter the risk of loss due to insolvency for the government. An interbank market serves no public purpose. Eliminates it. Eliminate it. Cut to six months by offering discount lending out to six months. I probably I probably read that wrong. Anyway. In addition to F- FOMC setting uh, the Fed funds rate target, it can it can also set the rate for three and six month borrowing at the discount window. This both gets the job done and also replaces the TAF and TSLF type of experiments. Not really sure that is, but anyway, now growth and employment offer directly or indirectly a federal a federally funded. Eight dollars per hour, fully uh, full time job to anyone willing and able to work. That includes health care benefits and employee and employed bu- buffer stock. Is a more effective stabilizer and price anchor. Is also less costly in real terms than the unemployed buffer, uh, unemployed buffer stock we currently m- maintain. Eliminate the various payroll taxes as needed to sustain demand. Implement needed infrastructure up- upgrades and repairs. Eliminate health care as a marginal cost of production. People aren't more likely to get ill if they are employed. In fact, the opposite is likely the case. The current system distorts pricing and results in suboptimal outlook or outcome for the economy's ability to sustain prosperity. Okay, so let's see. If you're in general agreement with the above, please forward this to all your con- contacts in the high places ASAP. Thanks. I wanted to, to do some from um, Bill Mitchell's uh, blog called uh, bibo.economicoutlook.net. <coughs> Uh, it's entitled, as you can see, if you're listening, first of all, thanks for listening, but uh, anyway, deliberately creating mass unemployment now would be the work of vandals and new Keynesians. This is uh, from today. Uh, last week, the New York Times published the latest Paul Krugman article on inflation, which is behind his payroll, is uh, syndicated elsewhere, and you can access it here at the Berkshire Inger, uh, Inger, <laughs> Inger uh, Eagle uh, from the 13th. Um, Paul Krugman, Krugman uh, inflation is about to come down, but does, but don't get too excited. I wonder whether the author had offered his services cheaper to the New York Times and elsewhere, given his concern for inflation and apparently his assertion that wages are a critical factor in sustaining it. 
What this article highlights is mainstream new Keynesian and ma ma macroeconomics, the, the, the dom dominant paradigm in our teaching, uh, research, and policy circles. What it also highlights is how different the mainstream is to modern monetary theory. Despite uh, characters like Krugman and his fellow New Keynesians trying to tell the world that there is nothing particularly different about MMT and the way they do economics. It also provides another chance for me to add a nuance to the job guarantee. So let's kind of see if we can get our hands on this um, and this uh, inf uh, inflation uh, portion by Paul Krugman, who I think should never have. Anyway. From Mars came in, are up, but more than where oops, where things data, even about the recent past, can give a misleading picture of what's happening now. In this case, the consumer price index, which roughly speaking, uh, speaking measures average prices over the month, probably missed a downward turn that began in late March, and it's accelerating as you read this. Inflation will probably fall significantly over the next few months. But we don't get too excited. The better numbers we're about to see won't mean the inflation problem is over. Why expect inflation to come down? Surging gasoline prices accounting for half of March's price rise, but it now appears that the world of oil market overshot in response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. A lot of Russian oil is probably still reaching world markets and President Joe Biden's million, million barrel a day release from the Strategic Petroleum Reserves, or SPR, and makes up for a much other shortfall as of Tuesday morning. Crude oil prices were barely above their pre-Ukraine level, and the wholesale price of gasoline was down about 60, 60 cents a gallon from its peak last month. Beyond that, there are growing indications that the bull, bull whip is about to, uh, to flick Back. What the bullwhip uh, effect is similar issue for products that are at the end of the long supply chains. Changes at the consumer and can lean to greatly exaggerated changes far farther up the chain. Suppose the tax and uh, tax, excuse me, the, the take to take a non random example that a shift to working from home, then uh, coronavirus panic leads to increased purchases of supermarket toilet paper, which is a somewhat different product from the stuff used in offices. Consumers seeing a shortage would rush to stock up. Supermarkets trying to meet the demand over, over order. Distributors who supply the market, supermarkets uh, over order even more, and suddenly there is no rules to be had. I assume, or sorry, I presume, by the way, that the term of bullwhip effects come from the fact that when Indiana Jones swings his arm, the tip of the whip moves much faster than his whip. Bullwhip effects probably have played a significant role in the bottlenecks that have uh, bedeviled the economy since we emerged from the pandemic recession. Consumers unable or unwilling to consume face-to-face consume -face services bought lots of manufactured goods instead, and in some cases overbought out of fear that goods would be available. Wholesalers and shippers in turn rushed to buy to be able to meet consumer demand and suddenly there weren't enough shipping containers or port capacity sending costs soaring. But now there is uh, a now there is growing buzz to the effect that the bullwhip is cracking back, and the CEO of Freight Waves, a company that specializes in supply chain analysis, recently published an article titled "Will the Bullwhip Do the Fed's Job on Inflation?" Actually, no, but I'll get to I'll get there. He pointed out that retailers appear to be overbought and are sitting on unusually large inventory. Car lots are uh, filling up. Demand for trucks is falling quickly. Internationally, uh, international shipping rates have seemed to be coming down. Supply chain issues, in other words, may well be about to fade away, producing a glut of trucking and perhaps slipping capacity, and this will remove one reason for high inflation. Okay, there are some other Im immediate factors pushing in the opposite direction. In particular, the cost of new apartment rentals 
and a sword, a fact not year not yet fully reflected in the uh, uh, official measures of shelter inflation, which still largely reflects leases assigned many months ago. Still, it's likely that over the next few months, inflation will come down significantly. But as I said, I don't uh, don't get too excited. The U.S. economy still looks overheated. Rising wages are a good thing, but right now they're rising at an unsustainable pace. This excess wage growth probably won't recede until the demand for workers fall back into line with the available supply, which probably, I hate to say this, means that we need to see unemployment take up at least a bit. The good news is that there's still no sign of expectation, uh, expectations of high inflation are getting uh, entrenched the way that the way there there were in say 1980s. Consumers expect <clears throat> consumers expect high inflation in the near uh, future, but medium term expe expectations haven't moved much, suggesting that people expect inflation to come down a lot. Anyway, if you think Tuesday's report showed inflation and uh, spiraling out of control, well, you're wrong. In fact, we're probably about to get some misleading good news on the front. On that front. <sighs> Well, let's see. I look at that and I look back at what I've been saying, what people like Mike Norman have been saying, what other people have been saying as far as looking at one of the major problems of the past two years has been the uh, the supply chain. I've been saying it since the since I first learned that uh, that uh, countries were still closed and. Uh, and cargo ships still had uh, had uh, cargo containers full of stuff, but at the same time, I acknowledge that because they can't get workers, because a lot of workers who may have worked for the same places realized, wait, this might be a time for me to move on to something else. So they did, and so as far as I know about places like Labor Ready, are no longer in, they're no longer a business as far as I know. I don't know. I haven't seen one in years. Um, but anyway, my point being there was I said in the very beginning that because the Senate did not increase minimal wage, or I'm sorry, minimum wage, it could be minimal as well, uh, to 15 bucks an hour, which is still way too low. Uh, since they didn't do that, they left that in the hands of the bigger corporations who can simply sit there and offer bonuses like $500 bonuses, $1,000 bonuses, whatever bonuses to bring people on. Uh, but after things start going and business starts picking back up to where it was uh, pre-pandemic, then things will go back to the normal as far as cutting wages and cutting benefits. And that's why right now you're seeing so many labor strikes. That's why Starbucks is doing it. That's why uh, they're, uh, I think Wendy's is doing it or some to that effect. Uh, fast food restaurants are doing it again. This is why. It's because people in the Senate didn't have the balls to vote for a higher minimum wage. Um, uh, setting the tone for wage increases in the general, uh, in the general economy. That's what happens as far as that part goes. Then you have inflation because stuff that comes from other countries can't get in because one, uh, there may not be enough cargo containers to do so, and two, they're all closed anyway because we're all we, we were all dealing with the same fucking thing. So, for Kruger, 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 sorry, Kruger, to sit there and say that uh, basically take credit for something he, he's been talking too much of spending. He was talking too much of deficit spending for the past two years. That's what he's been talking about. I've seen his interviews. He's He's been saying that uh, inflation has gone up because of spending. He hasn't, he, up until now, he didn't say shit about, about, uh, about the supply chain. People like me, MMTers have been talking about supply chains. We've seen that go on because that stuff can't come in. And if that stuff can't come in, then flight, then prices for the stuff that's already here will go up because demand is still there. Anyway, that's my thought on the whole thing. Uh, my little rant, if you will. Anyway.
This is why you should. Oh, this is why you should learn monetary theory because it's the actual way of looking at the economy. Literally, it's the actual way of looking at the economy. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, if you enjoy the rant, support this channel. Support the brand. Support whatever. Uh, by going to realprogressives.org, uh, support them as well. I am now a part of them as far as volunteer goes. So, anyway, uh, buy this shirt that you see on here. This will that'll be a part of the whole thing. Anyway, thanks for listening and watching. Uh, have a good night, and I'll have some up. I'll have something up later on for my Substack. Peace out for now.